Happy New Year, everybody. Happy 2021. So one of the features that we talk about with electric vehicle charge points, you've probably heard us mention it in videos or seen it on manufacturers' websites, is load management. This also can be known as load balancing, dynamic load management, or dynamic fuse. So in this video, we want to talk about what it is, what different ways there are of implementing load management, how it will benefit you as a customer, and why you might want to pay more for a charge point that has this facility. Hello everybody and welcome to Morzak EV, a channel dedicated to all things electric vehicles, electric vehicle charging and all related technologies. So as I said, there are a lot of different terms, but basically they all do something very, very similar. The idea with load balancing or load management is that it will control how much electricity or how much power the charge point will consume or your house will consume at any time. As I say, there are a couple of different ways of implementing it. We can go into some detail on this now, but let's talk about why you might want it first. So there are two main scenarios in a domestic property of why you want load management. And on commercial installations, it all depends on how much the facility uses in terms of electricity and how big your supply is. But the basics of it are, you do not want to use more than your supply can give. If you end up using more than your supply will give, your mains fuse will trip and you'll have a power cut just at your property. This obviously isn't a good situation and you need to call out your DNO to come and repair the mains fuse. They might also question why you were overloading your mains fuse and you might need to get some work done or shut down certain appliances or machines etc to make sure it doesn't happen in the meantime. Upgrading a supply can be very very expensive. So again by implementing load management it means you can have charge points installed without spending thousands and thousands on having your supply upgraded. A huge benefit in the grand scheme of things. On houses in particular most houses are on a single phase 100 amp supply at most. If you wanted two electric vehicle charge points installed, this will be 64 amps alone. If you only had an 80 amp fuse, for example, this only leaves 16 amps to run the rest of the house. Not a lot, especially if you have something like a shower and a cooker. There would just not be enough headroom when the two charge points are running. So, need some form of load management installed. So the main way that household load balancing works is by monitoring how much power is being consumed by your house's main fuse. Usually this is done by either a CT clamp going around your live cable or by going through some kind of meter. It measures how much power is being used and once it goes above a certain amount the load balancing is implemented have load management built into the charge point. There are a couple of ways this works, we'll cover that in a minute. You can also have a device installed which implements load balancing before the charge point. This is useful if you want a particular type of charge point that doesn't have built-in load balancing but you still need some form of load balancing introduced. The most common way to do this is using a device from a couple of different manufacturers it monitors how much electricity your house is using and once it goes above a predetermined limit which your electric vehicle charge point installer would set it to then it cuts off the supply to the charge point. The main downside with this type of device is that it's either on or off. You can't limit the charge point to a certain amount. So this means you could have, for example, 20 amps of headroom, yet the charge point would not be functioning at all. It shuts off the supply to the charge point altogether. Some charge points have load balancing built into the charge point themselves. 
and usually this implements the load management in a much more intelligent way. Charge point measures how much the house is using. So let's give some figures out as an example. You might set the charge point limit to 80 amps. It measures how much power the house is using. And let's say the cooker's on and somebody jumps in the shower. All of a sudden, you're consuming 55 amps. This only leaves 25 amps spare for the charge point. Under this scenario, if you didn't have any form of load management, you'd be over your main cutout fuse limit. And that fuse could blow. With load balancing, the charge point quickly reacts and will lower the consumption of the charge point to the electric vehicle to the 25 amps that's left, making sure your house is under your mains fuse limit. All very clever. Another way to implement low balancing with more than one charge point is to look at how much spare capacity there is on the property. This is more for commercial installations where there are multiple charge points. So it doesn't really apply so much to houses. But in this circumstance, a commercial property might allow 100 amps of their capacity for electric vehicle charge points. This would normally be three charge points running flat out at seven kilowatt. That's 32 amps. So 32 plus 32 plus 32 is 96 amps. However, this might cause issues if people are plugged in for longer than they need to charge or their vehicle isn't charging at full rate. Maybe it's a hybrid and doesn't have that full rate capacity. Maybe it's a company and people don't want to be swapping cars around. So they might want five or six or seven or eight charge points. Under those circumstances, a form of load balancing can be applied where it knows how much each charge point is using and will allow up to the 100 amps capacity. So under this example, if three cars are plugged in and charging, it will charge each one at 32 amps. Somebody else comes along, plugs in, it will then lower each charge point to 25 amps, sharing out the 100 amps between all four chargers. Somebody else comes along, plugs in, it will lower each charge point to 20 amps. Again, everybody's still getting a decent charge, but you're not going over your 100 amps limit. At that point then, the first person, their car might be full. It lowers down or even cuts out. So all the remaining charge points then go back up to their 25 amps. Then the second vehicle is full and then all the other charge points ramp up the 32 amps. I have been to companies where people are having to swap their cars around at lunchtime because there's not enough charge points to charge all the electric vehicles and implementing some kind of system like this removes the need to do that. Again there can be nuances between how each manufacturer implements this kind of load balancing but the end result is all pretty much the same. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was useful. Let us know what you think in the comments. Check us out on our social media platforms. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. And in the meantime, thanks for watching.